All right, it is episode number 682 of Let There Be Talk Solo again. I'm enjoying doing the solo episodes, and it seems like you guys are digging it too. And so, yeah, fuck it. Come on once a week or so, shoot the shit about stuff I've been doing, stuff that's going on out in the world, and uh, still have guests, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get it together here piece myself back together welcome to uh what's today monday the 6th oh it's axel rose's birthday i think he's like 61 or two um out there just making gazillions singing uh singing his ass off touring non-stop happy birthday to that man it's a it's an onslaught of aquarius this week it's like duff me and Axel and uh, who else? Oh, my good buddy, Dell James, all kinds of people all in one week. So uh, thank you. I want to tell everybody for the uh, the happy birthday wishes and all the DMs and text and everything uh, means the world to me. 57 years old, pretty fucking wild. And 57 is just a dumb number. You know, it's so weird when you look at birthdays and you think like, ah, it's just a 57, but uh, 60, that'll be a milestone. Then I'll have a big ripper party and everybody will say, you're old, you're 60. But uh, any birthday is a milestone. Let's just be honest. You make it another year and you're like, fuck. And I, I don't sit there and go, oh, man, I'm old. I, I I just I sit down and I go, OK, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I want to do comedy. And I've been doing that for 14 years This is my 14th year. I, I, I like to podcast. I love uh, getting out there, meeting you guys and, uh, you know, putting some sentences together that may make you laugh. Speaking of that um, show. Next week, Elko, Nevada, two nights, Elko, Nevada. And then the following week will be San Francisco homecoming show punchline, February 22, 23, 24, 25. So both the dates are on the website, Dean Del Rey. I didn't know. I, I, when are you coming? I didn't know. There you go. You know, that's all I can do. That's all I can do is I can say it in a microphone. I can say it on social media. I can type it up, put it out there. That's all I can do. And uh, had a had a good birthday. Had uh, spent it with some friends. Headlined out in Palm Springs. Felt good. It's it's so weird to headline on and off. Like you you do like you know the comedy store all week. You do like fifteen minute spots, and then maybe I go out and open for Burr or or Joey Diaz or somebody and do 20, 25. And then I go out and headline and you're doing an hour and you got to string all your material together and make it, uh, yeah, make it flow and have like a, a great thread to where people are fucking laughing. It's not all clunky. Like here's joke number four. Now here's joke number five, but, uh, anyway, it felt good. Got to see some old friends. Uh, it was wild. Some people I haven't seen in like 20, 25 years came out to the Palm Springs Aqua Caliente Casino. That's where I was. Uh, did a one-nighter there. And uh, the audience was amazing. It was a mix of uh, red and blue. And that's always a great combination in a room when you get some people that uh, are way into one joke. Yeah, fuck yeah, that's funny. And then you do something else and they're like, wait a minute, that ain't fucking funny. That might be about me. <laughs> then all of a sudden they don't like you and they're looking at you like, you better win me back. Nah, man, that ain't how it works, man. I'm just up here fucking slinging sentences, like I said. And uh, it was great out in Palm Springs. I can't think of a better place to spend my birthday than uh, Palm Springs. I absolutely love the desert. I've been going like crazy since COVID. I've been going like crazy for years, but since COVID, 
I've really fallen in love with it out there. And uh, a lot of the shops, a lot of the food, and then, of course, just the incredible mountains and desert scenery. And, uh, you know, I, I somebody hipped me to the store out there. It was called Market Market. And I go to this store all the time out there called Mojave Flea, which is basically kind of like a big store of different vendors that make shit. I'm into smell good shit. I'm like uh metrosexual. Remember those? Remember those guys? They, they didn't know. They weren't sure if you're gay or not. So they're like, I think he's a metro. It's a straight dude that likes to possibly dress gay or smell gay. How do you smell gay? You, know, you just smell clean. Ah, right, you smell gay. Fucking people. They're crazy, right? Anyway, uh, I love to smell good. I love oils and uh, incense. I like my house to smell good. I like my ass to smell good. I like my uh, armpits to smell good. I like to smell good. I'm. I don't like, I shower, man. I fucking shower. Stinky ass is the worst, man. Second hand, second hand ass. I've said it before. You get on a plane and you sit in a seat and a guy just had fucking stink ass. And now you've got second hand ass on your jeans. Perfectly clean jeans. Now it just smells like someone's else, someone else's ass. I, I keep it clean out there. But uh, so I go to the store, Mojave Flea. They always have people that make shit. I love, uh, you know, like the grail is the proof of it. I love people that make stuff and and uh, work out outside the box on their own shit. So I go to the store all the time and I'm in there and they go, oh, by the way, we have a new store up the street. And the woman just kind of describes it as just a, uh, you know, it's a kind of a cool used clothing store. I was like, oh, I'll go check it out. Now, I, I'm not a big, I used to be. I used to be way into like vintage clothes and, uh, you know, uh, just like cool old Levi's and jackets. But they make such great shit now that blows that old vintage stuff away and fit and finish and everything. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, I, I, I'm not really into used clothes, but I decided to, uh, to go check it out. And this woman totally described the store wrong. I'm just, I'm blown away. So I pull up, it's in a, uh, like an old kind of, uh, outdoor indoor kind of a, you know, funky looking strip mall at the South end of uh, Palm Springs. It, it, it looks like it's going to be bunk. I pull up. I'm like, what is this? See a couple people walking out that are dressed kind of like, uh, cowboys actual cowboys you know those guys that dress like cowboys in 2023 i love it i don't knock anybody my neighbor dresses like a cowboy i call him cowboy rob he's just uh straight up cowboy uh in los angeles cowboy not knocking it at all matter of fact i saw a couple uh girls wearing uh ostrich cowboy boots and uh you know i i rocked cowboy boots back in the 80s full on GNR style with some spurs, uh, skin tight pants inside the boot, pointier the better. Later, then you get in, you got different eras of boots. You got the pointy ones, the old Tony Llamas, that look, love it. And then, uh, then you've got the Stoner Almond Brothers, Acme, uh, you know, the, uh, the square toe, that fucking, that boot, it's always brown, it's got the brass ring on the side. You know, when I was young, my mom bought me some boots and I love that show Wild Wild West. And, uh, you know, he he had like he always had boots and then under the heel, he'd have like a little grenade or smoke bomb or some kind of sniffing salt and knock people out. You know, some, you know, he's like the cowboy James Bond. And so I remember my mom bought me some boots and I pried the heel off to see if there's any kind of, <laughs> any kind of fucking smoke bomb under there or whatever. And it just ruined the brand new pair of boots. Oh man. Hot wheel track was flying hot wheel. Psh. But uh, anyway, so I go into the store market market 
opened up the door, I look in, and it is fucking massive. It's 40,000 square feet. It's an old supermarket, and all the walls are knocked out. And it's got like exposed air conditioning ducts and everything. And what it is, it's basically like, you know, uh, mid-century furniture, old art and clothing and just, I mean, a gamut of stuff that is all high-end and amazing. Stuff that have come out of these mid-centuries when people die uh, in their homes out in Palm Springs. And then, you know, people, instead of having estate sales, they put it in the shop now. And it was, it blew my mind. I mean, there was like furniture in there. If you wanted to make your place look like clockwork orange, cocaine, you know, 80s futuristic den, they had that. If you wanted to look straight up Mad Men, they had that furniture. And then in the corners, they had clothing and paintings, like rad paintings and old photos. There's this incredible photo of uh, Martin Luther King, his first, uh, his first headshot, it was like an a, a authentic photo. It was, it was insane, man. I was like, God damn. You know, uh, you just, the, the shop was just loaded with beautiful, crazy stuff. And it was, it was so big. You could have a football game in there easily. Uh, so if you're out in Palm Springs, man, go check this place out. Market, market. Really, really insane. And then Mojave Flea is a great shop. I spun out to Joshua Tree, of course, and went out to uh, Pioneer Town. And just the weather was perfect and just kind of cruised around in the, uh, you know, that old West Town. And I hadn't been in a, in a bit. I hadn't been out there in probably about four months because they did the Marcus King tour. And then, of course, I was dealing with my mom and everything. So I have not been out to the desert in a while. And it was uh, great to get back out there and uh, felt good. A little decompress, do some comedy, came back and uh, had some good food with some friends, did a comedy all weekend. I was at the store. I was at the improv. And I was at the laugh factory. I was everywhere. By the way, comedy store has dropped a box set vinyl box set 50 year anniversary of the comedy store and it's albums of all these different eras and uh i had the uh the honor of being on one of the records and you can also stream it right now on itunes which is just amazing to be part of that i'm just today was the first day i heard it and it uh it choked me up man it choked me up a little bit because I was just like, God, I'm, I'm part of these. You see these names and you're just like, I'm, I'm in there. That is just incredible. And my joke is fucking, it's not half bad. It's recorded in the main room. I was, uh, it was a rocking night and the, the audio quality of it sounds great. So I was really, uh, happy to be part of that. And, uh, God, go check it out. There's so many people on this. I get the vinyl because in case it ever goes out of print, man, don't miss out on this full 50 year anniversary. It's like old jokes from people in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And it's just a history lesson in comedy, all on uh, vinyl or streaming if you want. But uh, thanks, Comedy Store, for having me. Very, very cool. I forgot to mention, speaking of, uh, of uh, going places. I forgot to mention last episode that when I was in New York, I ended up going and seeing the uh, Virgil Abloh uh, exhibit in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn Museum. And, oh man, this thing is incredible. They got a, a whole section of the museum dedicated to Virgil and all of his, uh, you know, all of his designs and his his art and his sneakers and, and just it just has this kind of beautiful combo of hip hop and sneaker culture and fashion all in one. It's ending at the end of the month. I'm so happy I got to see it because it really knocked me out. 
it was it wasn't really uh big but it was well worth it and uh just for me just alone to see all the sneakers that he did there was some that never came out and then there was uh you know he did that big louis vuitton collab for a few years he was uh designing for them there was something in there that knocked me out and really took me back to the 70s when i was young and it was a bat kite it was a louis vuitton bat kite now i don't know if you've grown up in the 70s or 80s or if you are uh you know, grew up in the nineties or whatever. I haven't really looked and I should have looked on, on, uh, I'm sure they're on eBay all over, but the old school bat kite. It's so weird to think about how simple life was pre-internet. You go down, you go to the supermarket and you would buy a kite for like $3. They had different ones. They had the standard one, where you had the wood sticks and you kind of made a cross like a Jesus Christ, you know, cross. And then the kite, you stretch the kite over the str- crosses. And that was more kind of like the, uh, you know, uh, almost uh, the Christian version of a kite, just real safe. And, you know, you're out with your parents flying a kite, like, yay, we've got a kite. And you had to put a tail on it so it wouldn't fucking just crash for some reason the tail made it just soar all cool but then there was the evil kite that was more of my speed and it was shaped like a bat like batman the batman logo that was always made of plastic and i remember specifically you know you'd buy rolls of string and i would try to get like five rolls and make that thing go up like two, three miles in the sky to where you can't see it. Or you and your buddies would get kites and you tie razor blades onto the, the bat wing part and you fucking try to take each other out, just slicing a string. You slice a string or his kite, it goes soaring. And then there was always that kite failure where you're flying it and it got caught up on a power line or or the string broke and went like a mile away in someone's yard. Anyway, there it was, the Virgil Abloh, Louis Vuitton fucking bat kite. And I thought, man, I wish I had that. I don't care what it costs, just to put in the house, somehow hang it to where it looked like it was constantly flying, you know, in your house. It was just fucking cool. Kites! When was the last time somebody talked about a kite on a on a podcast? You don't get that anywhere else. Shit. Kite flying. Yeah. That's what kind of thug I am. <laughs> you just did shit when you were a kid, man. You just flew kites. You did some water balloon fights. You did some uh, you know, uh plane cards onto your bike tires so it sounded like a motorcycle you did water weenies slip and slide all the simple shit when you were young pre-internet now internet now you kids just look at a fucking screen you're just out there screening or shooting guns one of the two fucking crazy god damn man Kite flying. That wasn't even on my list to talk about, but I'm just such an organic flower when I do solo episodes. Man, I just fucking, I just tell it how it is. <laughs> oh, anyway. So, Comedy Store, it's got the uh, 50 year anniversary out and uh, very cool. Hoping to get the uh, tracks onto XM Radio. Sometime in the next few weeks, I got to figure that out on sound exchange. I got so much shit to do constantly, you know, it's just like when you just work for yourself, it's constant shit. Like, Oh fuck. I forgot. I got to make a, a video for the Elko shows. Oh shit. I, I got to write jokes. Oh fuck. I got to book a flight. Oh man. I got to do a podcast. It's just crazy. It's just unbelievable. Um, also, I want to uh, shout out right now the Patreoners. God, thank you so much. And uh, uh, there's some special ones out there this week. Emily 
Arante. I hope I said that right. Just uh, she is the uh, the top Patreoner this month. Emily Arante. Also, uh, Bernie Guerrero and Robin Yates. Robin Yates. I've talked about her over and over on this podcast. She is just a a just a a, a pure soul. A constant great um, positive influence on me. Always saying like you. you I love your podcast. I love your comedy. And she's just, man, so good. Uh, Colton Forzy. Forzy. So uh, some new Patreoners there and some old friends. Thank you all for uh, joining up. It means the world to me. And uh, I will be doing a Zoom fest tomorrow. Uh, I know that for a fact. Because uh, I don't think I have a set tomorrow. So if you are on Patreon... Uh, look for the Zoom Fest. I'm ready. I'm ready to bring you the Zoomies. Episode is brought to you by Standard and Strange. Speaking of clothing, all of my clothing I pick up at standardandstrange.com. Check them out on the Instagram or their website or their stores in New Mexico, uh, New York City, and Oakland slash Berkeley. Unbelievable. Denim, leather, boots, uh, solid humans. It, it just everything I wear comes from there now, hands down. It's just a one-stop shop for me. Uh, denim galore. I wear the Momotaros. I love the real McCoy jackets. I've been rocking a real McCoy um, uh, Letterman jacket recently and a Y2 car coat. So those are uh, in the mix now. Standardandstrange.com. Also, if you have a dog, oh. Migos Dog. Migos Dog is the cleanest dog food made in Malibu, California. Okay. You can get it at Erwan, or if you live in the Los Angeles area, they will deliver it to your house. They're doing a special uh, right now. If you go to MigosDog.com, sign up, you will get an incredible deal. Also, you can pick it up at any healthy spot in California. Migos dog, salmon, duck, uh, what else? Gertie eats the beef. It's not out yet, the beef, but uh, Gertie's been testing the beef and loves it. Uh, MigosDog.com, all clean, organic, perfect human-grade food for your animal. Don't feed it bullshit. All right. There we go. Grammys. Grammys were last night. I didn't even know the Grammys were happening. It's like, uh, I just don't have time to think about uh, award shows. I do try to watch the Academy Awards every year because I just love watching, you know, you fall in love with some films and then you're like, let's check it out. I used to watch the Grammys like crazy and I'm not one of those guys. It's like, they don't show any rock anymore. I hear that over and over and over, and it makes me fucking crazy because it's like when rock started, it was all about being outlaws and not part of the system, and you fuckers don't get it, but the people do. That's what I'm always hoping, hoping happens with me. The industry doesn't get it, but the people do. They're big Dell Razors. But uh, that's how rock started out. And then, yeah, it got fucking huge and mainstream in the 80s with all the Bon Jovis and all that stuff. And, and then they were getting all kinds of awards and they were popular. So, of course, they're on the Grammy Awards. Um, but I don't remember, you know, and I think this is true. I, I don't think Zeppelin won any Grammys. And uh, I don't think they gave a fuck. And I think I don't think the Stones won the Grammys back in the day, you know, back in the seven, uh, 72 did exile win a Grammy. I don't know. Maybe it did. But I don't I've never seen footage of them showing up and playing, you know, uh, you know, ventilator blues on NBC in 1972. It was they were outlaws and it was a small core of people that were cool that listened to rock. And then it got big and mainstream. And, you know, if your type of music or your type of art is big, it's going to have the machine reach out because they want to make some money on you. 
and they want people to watch the fucking show. And so they, you know, will have you on. And so, you know, people just every year, it's the same people on the internet. It's crazy. Every year, here they come. Yeah, well, fucking, he don't show any fucking rock, man. It's fucking bullshit, fucking man. Fuck, who cares? Go to YouTube. You know how much rock is on YouTube? Rock is played all over the place. Sporting events, the coffee bean, uh, fucking any uh, venue. Yeah, rock is everywhere. And uh, it's not on the Grammys right now. That's Who cares? That's because... The people that tune into the Grammys are like old soccer moms that spin around in their SUVs, listening to like Adele and Beyonce and stuff. They're not going to want to see Jack White on there or, you know, the Killers or Mastodon or or Marcus King. They want to just see some fashion. They want to see some, uh, you know, the people that they hear in their, a uh, yoga class and it's fine. And not only that, but hip hop is fucking great. And they showcased the fuck out of hip hop last night. I watched it today. They did a 50 year anniversary of hip hop. And these rock people that complain, uh, uh, man, I listen to everything. I listen to country shout out to Willie Nelson won some Grammys. He's going to be 90 in a few months. They're doing a giant party for him at the Hollywood bowl. Uh, shout out to Bonnie Raitt. She fucking swept that shit, you know? And what you think Bonnie Raitt is a rock. You're out of your mind. A woman blues guitar player that just, you know, went through probably hell her whole career and had a big, big, big era in the 80s. And now she's got a bunch of Grammys beat out Beyonce and everybody. That shit is rock. That's rock right there. And hip hop is rock. It's got, it's dangerous. It, it's it's completely in our culture. A hundred percent. I love hip hop as much as I love rock. I have since the day I heard it. Had no idea it was 50, 50 years old. I'm 57. So I thought it was maybe about 45 because I first uh, discovered hip hop right there on uh, Rapper's Delight. And from then on, I'm obsessed with it and always have loved it. Public Enemy, you know, being the all time greatest for me. Chuck D, no one better. Uh, but I listen to hip hop right now. And I'm not one of those guys. And, and matter of fact, you know, the Beastie Boys was one of the greatest hip hop groups of all time. And they were rock, hip hop, soul, instrumental, weird, jazz, everything. And, um, you know, it, it was amazing what the Grammys did for hip hop last night. They gave them 13 minutes, 13 minutes and did three different eras of hip hop with all of these fucking greats. And, you know, uh, it, it was it was done well, man. You got like fucking, dude, hold on. Let me look here. It was unbelievable who was on this. Uh, God, it was, I watched, you can watch it on YouTube. And I just loved uh, seeing Ice-T back out there just spitting Raw game, LL Cool, just unreal. All right, so Busta Rhymes, Wu Tang, come on, man, Outcast, uh, Missy Elliott, Queen Latifah, big TV star now, fucking started in hip hop, too short from Oakland, who I know and see at the comedy store here and there, and was uh, part of his. Uh, video back in the day at the Omni with the pit bulls. Jimmy and I talked about that, but uh, I mean, they just went, you know, who was missing? Uh, I don't know why, but no ice cube, no N NWA. Um, and of course beasties. Cause you know, MCA is gone. Rest in peace. Just, just a fucking gangster. Anyway, you can watch it on YouTube and it's just great. To see it, you know, from Grandmaster Flash 
And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, Eric B. Oh, man, it's just so great. I'm looking at the list of it. Chuck D, though, man. Every time I see him, I just fucking, I just lose my mind. I just love Chuck D and Flavor Flav. And there they are still, alive, killing it. They still tour. DJ Lord is their DJ, my friend. And um, it's just great to see that glory from the Grammys. So uh, quit complaining, man. Quit complaining. It's the same thing with the Rock Hall. Those same people, and I hate talking about it every year because I say I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But I just, it's just crazy how it's the same people every year talking about like, man, this is bullshit. Fucking, I thought it was rock and roll, man. Fucking, what is this? The Rock Hall has some good nominees this year. Let me look at it right here. I grabbed it because, uh, you know, we got, uh, oh man, Soundgarden. God, I'm, ho I'm hoping they go in. Soundgarden, Iron Maiden, of course, you know. Uh, I think Maiden will go in because they're still doing arenas and they 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 did that kind of side sidestep for uh, Priest. But I think Maiden will go in and uh, Joy Division. Oh, my God. i still worship that movie. You know, um, Joy Division's up. George Michaels, Willie Nelson. He's going to go in hands down. I didn't know he wasn't in which was strange. Rage Against the Machine needs to be in. Soundgarden. Uh, Tribe Called Quest. Absolutely. White Stripes, 100%. Warren Zevon's not in? Warren Zevon needs to be in the Rock Hall immediately. Uh, Cheryl Crow, she'll go in. She sold 100 million records. She writes her songs. She plays instruments. Uh, no matter what you think of it, she's not rock and roll. Because Cheryl Crow is 100% rock and roll and, uh, you know, has wrote some of the best songs. Uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're classics. She wrote them. She sang them. She's toured. She's endured uh, some craziness uh, over the years, all the way back to when uh, the guitar player died right out of the gate. Um, so, yeah. Cheryl Crow, congrats. Spinners, can't believe the Spinners aren't in. How are the Spinners not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That's absurd. So, quit your crying out there, people. There's plenty of uh, uh, places you can find your music that you like, and YouTube is the number one spot. Uh, also, all kinds of rock and roll all over the internet, Hulu. Instagram, uh, Instagram loves rock, uh, Netflix documentaries, uh, Amazon prime documentaries. There's plenty of rock out there. Yeah. 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 Oh, they didn't get recognized. Well, you know, Ozzy, Ozzy, who just, uh, announced his retirement. He won two Grammys for, uh, patient number nine and that new record. So, Shout out to Ozzy, retiring. People asked what I thought, and I was like, well, you know, uh, I'm just happy that he uh, he's still alive. I don't need him to be performing. I know he wants to perform because uh, he talks about it all the time, but I'm just happy he's still alive because we are losing a lot of these legendary rock and rollers. So let's just let him chill and enjoy his grandkids. and. Uh, I think what he should do is maybe since he can't really travel and I don't know how bad off he is, but maybe a residency in Vegas just gets in the elevator, shh, goes straight down to stage, get him out there, let him sing a concert, shh, back up the elevator, chill out for a few days, then do it again. I, I could see that a residency would be fantastic. Everybody would fly to Vegas to see that. I still think the Stones should end their career uh, in Vegas. Just Keith and Mick on stage, acoustic, just like they started in a bedroom. You know, check out my blues record. Keith, like, that's a pretty good record, mate. Yeah. Tell little stories, strum some acoustic, some harmonica, play like Sweet Virginia. 
play like Miss You Acoustic, play all of Exile, whatever. Just the two of them up there in the career, like a three month residency. Be fucking smoking. I know that they, uh, the shows, first of all, the show would just sell out. There would be no tickets. Two of them in Vegas at uh, at one of the primo rooms, too. Like that one, um, let's see, the one Burr, Burr does. I forget what that is. Or the one Adele plays. Like a really nice fucking room. I finished the Elvis movie, by the way, speaking of Vegas. I finished it thanks to my man, uh, Ryan, he he hooked me up with a Rifax with a HBO code. So take that, HBO. I watched them stuff at the house. <laughs> Next Netflix, people are furious, right? They're talking about not letting you share your uh, password and stuff. Oh, man. People are like, this is bullshit. How you can share the password? You, you ain't got nothing good on there. I, I, I'm not paying <laughs> every. Everybody wants shit for free, man. Netflix, see? You're going to get a little taste of the music industry. That's what happens, man. People get shit free. And next thing you know, they don't want to pay. They do not want to pay. You cannot put the genie back in the bottle. So we will see what happens with that. Oh, man. What do we got here? Let me look here. I'm, uh... I'm, I'm babbling away, and I want to get to a couple couple other things here. Um, what do we, Oh, this happened to me. Uh, I was reading the um, the top twenty uh, industry music industry money makers of the year, and fucking Chili Peppers. I think they were number three, and there were heavyweights on there. I mean, heavyweights and Chili Peppers amount of money they made last year. was It made my fucking glasses pop off, man. I was like, Chili Peppers. It's so crazy to think about that band, how much money they made last year. When I think about the history of the Chili's, losing a guitar player, then losing the second one because he quits, then having that at one point, Dave Navarro was in the band. Remember that Dave Navarro was in the fucking Chili Peppers. It was like a, a cross pollination of fucking nineties. Yeah, here we go. We, we got a combo, but these guys made some fucking money, man. And, uh, you know, they are making crazy money right now. And what made me think about this was flea is selling his house. And I am uh, one of his houses. Now, Flea has like, I think like five homes. But he has this house. And, you know, I'm a, a an architecture junkie. I love mid-century. I love Lautners. So Flea has this house that is a Lautner up in the Glendale, Pasadena Hills area, Altadena, something like that. It's on this perfect fucking ledge, just overlooking the city. And then... And then he or somebody else built another house that's ultra modern and crazy. It looks like a, uh, like, uh, you know, those honeycomb pastas. You ever get those mac and cheese at one point you could get the honeycomb mac and cheese. Oh, it was deluxe. This wasn't your peasant fucking tubes. This was honeycombs. You were like another level of, uh, you know, right above poor, you were a little poor. If you had the honeycomb round craft macaroni and cheese. So there's another house that looks like that on the lot. And then there's a pool and a fucking log cabin, a new log cabin that flea had built this compound straight up. I can't remember. I think it's $8 million. And, and I'm going to quote my mom. If I win the lottery, I will call Flea because I'll get his number from somebody I know. And I will say, Flea, I'll buy your place. And you want to do the podcast. <laughs> I'll say, no. But I would buy this. Now, I'm bummed because I don't need three homes. I only like a one or two bedroom house. 
I don't need no mansions. I've said it over and over. Fuck a mansion. But this Lautner that's on there, and you can go look at it, put in Flea's House for Sale on YouTube, and just have your head pop off. This Lautner on there is so worth it that I'm not quite sure what I would do with the other places. I guess they would sit empty or maybe Gertie would have her own house. Gertie could go chill in the log cabin and, uh, or you just make the, uh, the honeycomb, the craft Mac and cheese, honeycomb house, make that some kind of uh cool, I don't know, studio slash something. I don't need all that. And the property taxes are going to be fucking insane. But the actual Lautner house is uh, so incredible to me. And, you know, 8 million bucks. That's just one of Flea's houses out of Flea's super paper. I am blown away by the paper that chili peppers have made now one they sold the under the bridge record what is that red hot minute or something what's that one called i can't remember no red hot minutes after um but the one with under the bridge that sold during the era of people not stealing music so just that record alone has probably made those guys most of their money then touring t-shirts commercials uh, i remember they, they were in some commercials for a while there like super bowl stuff so over the years just making paper but holy shit they were like number three i mean it was crazy to see speaking of that speaking of uh crazy to see springsteen kicked his tour off this week and I'm, I'm obsessed with Springsteen. Always, uh, well, I haven't always loved him. I didn't love him till Ghost of Tom Joad. But uh, I've seen him since then. And I always go see him live. And I just love Bruce. So I'm fired up. I know this is going to be the last tour. There's no way. This is a two-year tour. It is intense. These guys are in their 70s. Bruce is in shape. But are the other guys in shape? Do they fucking work out? Because when I looked at the schedule, it's one on, one off, one on, one off. This is gnarly. Even for me, at 57 years old, I just did the uh, Marcus King tour. And it was like 33, 34 dates or something. I don't know how some of those guys are going to do it. Now, I'm sure Max Weinberg's in shape. And uh, Jake, who's the, uh, the big man's nephew, plays sax. Now he's young. He's got it. But Bruce is still doing an old school three hour show. He fucking played 28 songs on the opening night of the tour. 28 songs. The Stones do like 16 or 14 songs. If you look at their set, it used to be 25. Then it was 21. Then it was like 20. Now they're around 14 songs. And, you know, 28 songs and they're not three minute ditties bruce's tunes are long this fucking guy i'm telling you man this could be dangerous for the health of these guys man i want them around and uh you know one on one off one on one for two years 25 to 28 songs go bruce does not fuck around he has that mentality of like, I'm going to let you know I'm 24 years old still. I'm going to play. I'm sliding on my knees. I'm pumping the arm many times. I'm jumping off drum risers. I'm screaming. I'm yelling. I'm going for it. It is intense to see Springsteen. I saw him three, four years ago, whenever the last tour was, and I saw him on Broadway. When you see him play with the E Street Band, this guy is like nitrous. And I am fucking, I, I, I am, if they pull this off, the two years, I will be fucking bowing to that endurance and that uh, physical, uh, you know, it's like NFL game, man. They're in there taking hits. The volume is loud and the, uh, 
Somebody told me one time, somebody just told me recently, uh, they were watching Bruce play and he played like four hours. You know, he used to do some four hour shows and shit, no opener. And uh, they were getting ready to leave like, all right, good night. And then he uh, he said, fuck it, let's do one more. And they said they saw Clarence just go, motherfucker. Like Clarence was done. He was done. Like I'm blowing. I got lungs. I'm blowing into this horn. I'm fucking, you know, I'm done. Oh, my God. So I just can't even imagine a year from now, they'll still be on tour. And I'm going to follow this like crazy. I want to see it in uh, at the Garden. I want to see it at the L.A. Forum. I wish Bruce would do a couple cool things on this tour, just secretly like one-offs like Red Rocks and a run at the Hollywood Bowl real quick. Just pop it in there like he did in 75, the Hollywood Bowl. God, that'd be so cool. Just out of nowhere, a pop-up show at the fucking, at the Red Rocks. Bruce at Red Rocks. Come on. Come on. Come on, Bruce at the Fillmore. Just to pop up at the Fillmore like he did in 78. That great uh, uh, bootleg live at Winterland. Oh, my God, that's a bootleg. You want a bootleg? Go listen to that on uh, YouTube. All right. Shows this week. I'll be at the store popping around and uh, uh, Laugh Factory. And then... um, also, next week, Elko, Nevada, two nights at the stage door. And then the following week, we'll be at the punchline. Hope to see you guys out there. I love all you guys. Hit the patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Also, leave a review on iTunes. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Spread the word. Tell everybody about it. Merch is back. The Dean Del Rey Perry shawl shirt will be available this week. I still got the Gertie hoodie. Gertie hoodie. Gertie hoodie is in the house. You can buy that. I love all you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Candles are lit. Love you, mom. Miss you. Here we go. That is the show. See ya.